like cover screen. So I just want to make sure everyone's seeing us and hearing us. So let us know. Give me a thumbs up. Hi, Camille and Nipun. Welcome. Yes, I'm not seeing our live either. YouTube is showing me that we oh, are Oh, I just saw it. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Hi, Rick. <laughs> Hi, Andreas. Camille Nipun, thank you so much for joining. Well, I think we're good now. I wonder if we were visible to others, but not to ourselves. <laughs> um, let us know in the chat. Either way, it's so fine. We've... Now we're here. Yes. <laughs> we are now here. Yes. And let us know in the chat if this is your first time watching the Adobe Fonts live stream. This is our 20th episode today. Yeah. So I'd love to episodes. welcome you if it's your first one. Yay. We're seasoned professionals now. Some of you may have been here at the very first episode with us. So if that's you, we really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I, we've done some pretty cool episodes this year, I think. And this one is no exception, but I'm pretty happy with them. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, Dorina. Hi, Mwendwa, Rick, Stoney. I think Camille was here for our first episode, so nice. she can get the medal. Camille gets the Lisa medal. Lisa says it's her first time. Welcome, Lisa. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thanks for joining. Let us know if you have any questions about Adobe Fonts, if you're an Adobe Fonts user. Um, Dorina as well, if you've used Adobe Fonts, if you have any questions, all that stuff, that's what we're here for. So uh, shout out anytime during the whole stream uh, and we'll answer any questions we can. Uh, I'm Ben, by the way, for those that are new, I'm in Brooklyn. I'm a content producer for Adobe Fonts. I started in support and um, basically answered a bunch of y'all's questions for many years. And then we wanted to think, how can we share some of that knowledge in a broader way? And so I kind of transitioned into a role where I can uh, focus more on education and not just responding to one-on-one -on -one questions um and so that's what the stream is about and some of the videos uh that you may have seen and and things like that that i've done and and yeah we hope uh we hope it's useful and and uh adobe fonts is such a the thing we hear the most from people is that they didn't realize they could use so many fonts with their creative cloud subscription we hear that all the time so i'm trying to uh, evangelize adobe fonts as much as i can so and then of course my uh my co-host ari yes I'm Ari. I am the library manager for Adobe Fonts, which means that I work with all of our foundry partners that design the fonts to bring them to our users. And all the fonts that we add, we're constantly adding new ones every month. And now we're over 20,000 in the collection. So making sure that we have a wide range of language support and independent designers from all over the world so that you always have fresh fonts to choose from. Yes. 20,000. Can you believe that? Yes. I can't believe it. It's a lot. We can never use them in our lifetime. So yeah. that's why we have to keep making logos and yeah. stuff. Yeah, we got to keep trying out all these fonts. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of which, we have a poll today for the audience. And uh, creating a logo for your own brand, which one of these would fit you the most? One. I'll leave the logo design to others for now. Two, not yet, but soon. Something's percolating, maybe. And three, I brand my stuff all day. So let us know in the chat with the number which one of these kind of fits you. And uh, and if you've designed uh, a logo for your own brand, let us know what the name is or anything about it that you'd like to share. We'd love to hear about it. Um, this is related to today's topic. Ari, uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about... about uh, you know, why this is uh, so appropriate to today's discussion. Yeah, today I'm going to show the process of designing a logo for my new hobby slash business, which is an earring, clay earring company. Um, and it's very new, so I'm just starting to figure out if I'm going to sell earrings what I'm going to do, but I need a brand for sure. So um, I'm wearing a pair of my earrings now. Oh, I'm going to switch so we know. can see a little bit larger. Oh, nice. Um, so I thought this would be a great thing to show on the stream and show that you can use Adobe fonts in your logos. And that's what I'm going to do. 
So let's see what people said. We've got Stony says two. So Stony hasn't designed something yet, but maybe wants to. We have see. a few threes. Carrie, David, Andreas, Moendua nice. is designing, branding stuff all day, making logos. Sean says 2.5. Okay, so. I feel like I'm a 2.5 as well. <laughs> I'm not always making logos, but I will make one every few months for something. Yeah, I think I'm 2.5 as well. I've definitely, I've made a few band logos for myself. I've made a few, you know, I have, I used to have a podcast, so I made a podcast logo back in the day. So kind of 2.5, but you know, yeah. And Devin just joined us. Hi, Devin. Devin is a three. What kind of logos have you designed, Devin? Let us know. Yeah. Lisa's created logos for others, but not for themselves. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I think that's usually the case, especially for me. I mean, there's only so many things that I can create a logo for that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But I've created two for myself. And maybe a few for learning purposes, yeah. but then it's usually others that kind of gave me the impetus to do it because I didn't think I would create anything good enough. But then when other people asked me, I was like, oh, they think I could do this for them. Does that mean I'm capable of this? Yeah. So let us know in the chat if that's happened to you. Like a friend asked you to create a logo and you were like, oh. I didn't know people thought that I could do this. <laughs> I had a similar uh, a similar thing happen when I was younger and playing music. People started to ask me to play at their weddings when they walked down the aisle. And that seemed like such a an important day for them that when they asked me to do it, I was like, oh, I must be pretty good because yeah. they're trusting me with such an important moment in their lives. And I thought, oh, that's cool. So similar i was like oh if people are asking me to do this for their wedding chances are i could probably just do this on my own and it would be okay so yeah yep uh speaking Devin of says i created the branding and brand direction for my job oh cool so it's a resort masa newton resort it's 50th anniversary nice let us know where the resort is yeah absolutely yeah this is a so obviously goes along with today's topic, making and animating logos. Um, the animating will be in part two. We were thinking it might be fun to show a real life logo project, which Ari will show you something that's a real life project and that she actually designed something for. And then I'm gonna try to take that and create some social media kind of animated GIF style things that we could do that hopefully aren't too complicated, um, but are fun and like an easy way to share you know, a piece of uh, basically brand something animated for for social media or something like that. So that'll be in part two. Part one, we're going to show this uh, logo process and all that good stuff. It's going to be awesome. Um, cool. You want to dive in? I, I'm ready in one minute. I mean, one second. <laughs> you just let me know. <laughs> Um, I see that Megan said, I'm still learning how to make logos. I think we're all learning. I mean, even if you're a professional, there's still things that you're trying to learn. Yep. So I am. don't think that there's people that aren't learning anything anymore. I try to see myself as a lifelong learner and never never feel like I totally have something under under my belt you know I want to I want to make sure um I'm yeah. always in, adding in new challenges and 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 getting better so yeah so I feel you all right I'm ready let's do this so what are we looking at so my earring company is called Pilo Clay and the reason it's called Pilo mm -hmm. is because that's the word for clay in Greek. Oh, nice. And I've written it out here so you can see. Um, it starts with a pie, which we all recognize as a mathematical symbol if we don't read Greek. Um, but it's also 
a letter in the Greek alphabet that's used in many words and happens to be the first letter in philo. Um, the reason there's an accent at the end is because in Greek we say philo, but in when I'm not speaking in Greek, I'm, I think most people would just say Pilo. So I, I pronounce the company name Pilo. Nice. Just as some background. And I'm showing you this because I wanted to incorporate that Pi character in the logo in some way. So that's why. Nice. So here are some sketches I did on Fresco. I'm just zooming in so that you can see and you've just you just exported from fresco and brought those into illustrator right so you have them here yeah this is just an image cool for reference so once i choose one of these then i can just go over it in vector hmm. with the pen tool so uh, mike says it's all greek to me <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> and I think we have a few more people joining Manish and Barbara welcome indeed we're talking about designing a logo and using Adobe fonts in your logo and you can use Adobe fonts in your logo it's totally fine you can use Adobe fonts for commercial purposes so that includes logos we get so, that we get that question a lot so Yes, yeah. I think it's one of the most common questions. Mm -hmm. So let this be the answer once and for all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so I was just sketching, trying to figure out, like, do I want to use the word Pilo at all? Do I just want to have like the Pi symbol? And it's important to think about where this is going to show up. So definitely on social media, like your profile thing on Instagram. Um, maybe it's going to be an Etsy store. So maybe I would have like a banner at the top. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different applications for it, but I wanted something that could have text and a symbol so that there's multiple layouts of it. Um, and so the first one, I was like, oh, maybe a circle. I was thinking about the Instagram profile. Like I should have something that's a circle. How do I fit in the letters? Maybe play with that. Um, then I was drawing this pie and I was like, oh, the legs of it could be the I and L. And then I could write Pilo and somehow incorporate both the symbol and the word. Um, so I really liked that, but I thought it was a little bit too much or like not easy to understand. I love the idea, but when you do it, it's, I'm like, oh, I can see it now that you told me Pilo and, and the I and the L totally makes sense. But if I just saw this straight, I would be like P Pi O, right? P Pi O. P Pi O, which sounds kind of cute, but is not the actual <laughs> name. So, you know. Yeah, and I was like, how can I make it so that you don't read the pie? So like making the top a different color. But I think it was just a fun exercise. I don't think that that will be used. Um, then I was thinking maybe like a script lettering. So I was experimenting with that. And then I pretty much decided I wanted that pie in there. And so I tried different variations of it. Um, none of these are really traditional ways to draw this character. I mean, you can see like this is more of a traditional um, pie. And maybe usually the first leg um, curls out and the last leg doesn't. But there's like so many ways to draw every letter. So I wasn't too worried about how it's traditionally drawn. Um, when I write it with my handwriting, I always have the second leg kind of kick out. Hmm. So is there, I experimented with that. Is there any, was there any at all, um, any thought of like architecture? Like I see the, the one, the third from the right here looks very architectural yeah. and 
it reminds me of kind of Greek architect or something like I don't know what that means, but it just kind of evokes yeah, something. Yeah, like columns. Yeah, exactly. I really liked this one. Yeah, but it evokes that, even though you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely evokes the architecture. So I should also show. I just have a few pictures of earrings here. Um, to show some examples of the earrings that I've made. These are the earrings are you've kind made? Of inspiring. Yeah. Awesome. So these are kind of inspiring what the logo is going to represent. Yeah. And I think the, the one that the white one with the diamond, that's definitely like evoking that ar those architectural elements. And even, even the other shapes have this marble or you know, this statuesque, it just feels kind of, it, it still evokes some of that to me and clay, of course, yeah. you know, um, for sure. Yeah. And Sean just asked a great question. What type of person is your market? Is it high end, etc.? cetera? Mm. So that's also a great consideration when you're designing a logo. Like how do you want your brand to be positioned among all the other brands? So there's a ton of, clay polymer clay earrings out there um i mean companies that make them small their own identities and there's some that are more playful than others some that position themselves as more high end i think that i would like to be kind of in the middle i want them to be affordable um and I want there to be a little bit of playfulness. So I did really like this kind of architectural one, but I thought that it might be lack a little bit of character. Um, and so I was leaning more towards the one right to the left of mm. it because it has that block at the top that's more like sturdy and architectural and then it's kind of playful underneath <laughs> like kicking um if i can call it if i can personify this design i got a kicking um, vibe so i think that <laughs> that sounds appropriate to me <laughs> and i was also thinking about like do i want it to be handwritten do i want it right pillow under it do I want it to be a more handwritten um look or like the architectural one a little more um how should I say kind of clean and clear cut I guess <laughs> yeah. yeah um do I want it to be a serif do I want it to be a sans do I want it to be handwritten so that's something that we're going to explore awesome but for now um First of all, let me know what you liked and what you gravitated towards. Someone and... said they really liked the first one. Um, oh, which yeah. Obviously, That's is a direction to me. you didn't go in, but still, um, I think it looks fun. I was thinking that it could look like a face, like a nose and eye. Oh, yeah. If I did it a certain way. Yeah. Um, which is kind of fun. I think that if I was going for a specific market, like, there's some earring designers that do really funky things and mm. like really bright colors and stuff. Maybe I would want to go for that top left one and make it um, make the letters a little more bubbly mm. and it bright colors in the logo. But because I'm trying to have a little more of a refined, like towards the high end and my designs are much more muted and not like, really funky um it wouldn't fit as well that but makes sense. i'm glad that someone i did see that i did see someone say that mm. i'm glad that they did um so for now i'm just going to i cropped into this one and i'm just gonna hide the um before we leave the image. sketches um oh, darina wow. asked do you sketch your logo variations on paper or in fresco photoshop i did this on fresco with my ipad and is that your go-to most of the time i was like trying to show the apple pencil <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, yeah, usually it's my go-to because when I'm creating something that's ultimately going to be finished on the computer, it's so much easier to just sketch it on the iPad and yeah. then send it over as opposed to taking a picture of the paper or scanning it or something. I love paper um, and pen, but I don't actually own a scanner. And so I could get a scanner, but I have my iPad and Fresco feels great. So it's like, you know, it is yeah. really convenient that way. And, and it looks great. That it looks like sketches. So. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a few ways, you know, you can use Adobe Capture, mm -hmm. you can take a picture, you can scan it. Um, when you do a analog sketch, but something this simple, I don't have an issue using the iPad. If it was like a really detailed illustration, it's hard for me to use the iPad. Mm. Um, just like fine details, just your hand doesn't move the same way. Yeah. But something like this where ultimately it's going to be a vector drawing anyway, and it's just simple shapes. Um, I was fine using the iPad. <clears throat> Carrie asked, does Fresco use vector or is it pixel? You can do both on mm -hmm. Fresco. Yeah. So there's vector brushes and pixel brushes. And it's brushes. pretty clear in Fresco which are which. You can see when you select a brush if it's a bitmap brush or a, or a vector brush. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, the water, the, the paint brushes in Fresco are incredible. Um, in the beginning, the when we're waiting for everything to start and there's those clouds uh, at the intro, I made those little clouds from the watercolor just using white to make those clouds. So Fresco's a really versatile and fun tool. Well, I didn't scale that. I didn't hold shift down. <gasps> How could you? I stretched it. How could you? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just going to make this bigger. So I'm not going to be using Myriad in my logo, but just to show um, that I want to have text underneath. Mm. And then I'm going to take the opacity down on this first. I can cut over it. Nice. 25%. Yeah, not 26, not 24, everyone. It's got to be 25. Okay, 25. We've, we've tested them all. It is 25 when you're doing vector drawings over your bitmaps. So I, this is just a rectangle, so I can just use a rectangle. I'm just going to lock this because it's annoying that it has a box around it. So yeah, just do that. That was easy. Very easy. Um, but I want to have it just with an outline stroke. It's easier for me when I'm drawing. So I just switched that over. And then for the legs, you could say like, oh, just do a triangle. But I would be concerned if it was a triangle that this join here would be too thin. Hmm. Um, I need a little bit of sturdiness there. So I'm actually going to do start up here so that they overlap. Hold down shift. Hold down shift again. And the shift and then... makes the angle per perfectly uh... 90 degrees, right? And and straight. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And then I go here and join. So I have this, it's not actually a triangle. It has um, a little square edge mm -hmm. so that, and it's overlapping so that if I wanted to move this up or down, I have a little bit of space that it's still overlapping and it's not going to come to a point where it's hitting the rectangle at a point and then having that um, too much white space there. And if, if it's going to be all black too, eventually, then no mm -hmm. worries that that no one would know anyways, because it'll look just no look like one. one symbol. Yeah. So I'm just going to do this one. This is a little more complicated because are you about to it... bezier? <laughs> <laughs> It's time to Bessier. Here we go. Um, what? <laughs> so this is going to be annoying 
here, <laughs> but I'll fix it, don't worry. This is not how it's gonna end up. And then here, it kicks out and I'm gonna have a little square edge here too because I don't want it to come to a point. If I didn't do a square edge and I did this, you're gonna get this. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that. I don't want these points. Even if I change the stroke to be, you know, this yeah, um, no. rounded corner, it's still gonna look really pointy when you make it smaller. I just want so, to call this out that this is very useful if you if you want to find rounded uh, strokes um, or even angular strokes um, for the joints. Um, is super useful yeah. to find. Um, I took me a while to find out exactly where that was when I first found it, but super useful. Yeah, question. who knew those little tiny dots underneath mean that you have a whole menu under it. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna do that. Oh, whoops, wait, I need to go back because I don't want this. I'm not gonna do that even though I could achieve a little bit of a straight edge with the stroke panel. Um, because it's not straight enough. And and maybe, well, I don't know about if this is what you intended, but I feel like that square edge kind of reminds me of more like a chisel and again, or like a uh, some kind of architectural structure where it's not so curvy. It's not so perfectly um, smooth. So I don't know. Yeah, that could be. It feels like it would look a little jarring if it was just, Pointy. By the way, I'm doing this like <laughs> my hand is very far. This screen is far. So sorry if it looks weird. Um, and then we're going to go in with our direct selection tool because this needs help. Um, first of all, when you're looking at when you're doing Bezier curves and you're looking at your handles, make sure that your handles are pulling equal weight. So for example, this is not gonna, whoops, this is not gonna lead to a good curve because this handle here is doing so much more, right? It's doing a lot more yeah. than the handle on the right. So we want to get them kind of equal. There we go. Um, of course, I need to see the whole thing when I'm doing this, so I shouldn't be zooming in that much, but it's for the benefit of the stream. Mm -hmm. And this is horrible. Oh my gosh. Unbelievable. Fix that. Reaver, Reaver <laughs> Mike says, kind of looks like 70s disco platform shoes to me. And oh, yeah. That is total. I'm surprised I didn't think of that myself. Agreed. How did you not think of that? And especially you already said that it was kicking and I was like, it's totally disco. Like I'm feeling very Saturday night fever right now. Yeah. I put the Bee Gees on and you know, <laughs> cut a, cut a rug. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to flip this. Okay. So now we kind of have this shape. We could spend a long time refining this more to make sure the curves are all good. Mm -hmm. And I might do that later, but just because we don't have hours here to sit and do vectors with you all, um, we can leave this as is. And then I'm going to hide. And, and the... really quick, uh, Ari, when you say refine this, like to me, this looks pretty good, but if you were gonna get really detailed with this, what are some of the things you'd wanna make sure were you know, like um, up to up to par. Down here, I'm thinking it needs more okay. work. Yep, I see what you um, mean. This curve is not perfect for me. Hmm. Um, I didn't add an anchor point on, uh, I didn't add handles to this corner anchor point. So okay. I think that's the issue. Um, cool. And I would probably, um, hide this and look back at my sketch mm -hmm. and say, has the spirit of the sketch been converted to vectors? Because a lot of times, let us know in the chat if this has happened to you, you draw something and then it 
spirit is sucked out of it yeah, once it, it you loses some of its it. yeah it loses some of its character it loses some of its um its vibe sometimes not always but sometimes yeah so a lot of times i will do this and then i'll look back at my sketch and say what what was it that i loved about this and sometimes it's something very minor like this curve here is the thing that made it so great and then once i did this maybe the curve didn't look the same and in this case i think it looks pretty good um but that's kind of how i would go back and forth brian says yep has that happened to you brian i think it has <laughs> okay so i'll hide this sketch um i'll also look at you know take the ruler down and see how much um, larger each leg is than the other. I think the curve going a tiny bit further down than the straight edge is fine, but you know, just look at it at different sizes, all that stuff. Yep. So it might need refining in the future, but for now we're just gonna look at adding the tag line or the company name underneath. <clears throat> and also perhaps um, framing it in some way, like, does it need a circle around it? So I'm going to start with, I had that already in the previous layer, but I hit it, but whatever. I'm going to start with this. It's pretty easy to create text. So, oh, I have to do this all over again. <laughs> you have to I type out it. pilo clay again. Oh, I have it in Greek. Whoopsie. Change the language. I have to type it again. How will I survive now, this? Am I correct that this says clay clay? Yes. Nice. Because <laughs> pilo means clay in Greek. Nice. So it's kind of like, you know, maybe I would consider doing something like this as the brand name or oh. like it's, I don't know. Let us know what you think knowing that pilo means clay in Greek, but knowing that most people don't know that. <laughs> so. Um, so I would center this and everything, but once I start changing the fonts, it's gonna be like jumping everywhere. So let's just start looking at how we can experiment with fonts from the Adobe Fonts service right in Illustrator. So, this is what I want to change. Let's see. I'm going to go to my font menu. <clears throat> so I can access my font menu here. And that way, Whoa. I just wanted it to be towards the right so that um, we can see all the changes as we go through. So it's really cool that when you're going through the font menu, you see those fonts reflected on your canvas. And that's one of my favorite things. We're, and, we're hidden behind our heads a little bit, but I think people will oh, get the idea. Um, I can move this a little bit, Ben. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. And I want them to see that menu too, because it's, you can see the example yeah, in there as well. The menu. Yeah, I think this layout's good. Wait, I'll move it a tiny bit. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So I'll point out a few things about this menu. And we've talked about this before, but it's worth repeating. There's a lot in this menu. Mm. And it's here to help you find exactly what you need. So you'll see that I have a filter selected, which is filtering active Adobe fonts. This is only showing me the fonts that I've gotten from Adobe fonts. If I unselect it, it shows me fonts that are on my system or bundled with Illustrator because a lot of fonts just come with Illustrator. Hmm. Um, so if I don't have any filter selected, um, I'm just in my regular font menu that has everything on my system, on my computer. So there's multiple ways that we can filter down. First is what I already did show activated fonts. Another one is show favorite fonts. So I can easily favorite something. And then um, once I do that, 
for example, I don't want a favorite myriad. It's a great, great font, but you know, Here, we're familiar I'll favorite, with it in Illustrator. <laughs> I'll favorite um, PT Sans. And then once I do that, it's in my favorites. So that's a great way to just narrow down, you know, your font menu, things that are on your computer and everything that you have so that you're not like scrolling endlessly every time. I feel like the, the favorites is something you can use too as kind of a, like when you're browsing all this stuff and you just want to have like a little, almost like a scratch pad or like a, a list that you like, you could just use this per project and favorite 10 or 11 things. And then yeah. from there, figure out what you want to use rather than keep trying to filter and copy and yeah, do all this stuff. Yeah, maybe we'll do that for this project. Cool. Let's so try it out. The other thing you can do is filter by classification. Mm. So like I said earlier, I don't know if I want this, what classification I want the font to be that's in the logo. It might be sans serif, might be serif, who knows, handwritten, we give that, that handmade vibes and I make the earrings by hand. I don't know, we'll see. Um, I see that a few people just joined. Um, Brian's from Arkansas. Uh, Atikur says hello. Mohammed says hello from Sudan. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, and if you're on YouTube, you might be watching on YouTube. We can't see the chat there. So come over to behance.net slash live and chat with us there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say hi to you. So I can filter um, by classification here. And this is still showing me everything on my computer and all my Adobe fonts that I've activated. So right now I'm just going to filter by active Adobe fonts to see like, what do I have already that I can start favoriting hmm. so that we have a few options. So Acme Gothic is what I used in that logo that looked very architectural because I was experimenting with having a font instead of, handwriting underneath and so i kind of love this i think it it does have a little bit of interest it has that high contrast it's actually modeled after sign painting so i kind of like this i'll favorite it and then here's another thing um, we've talked about this before and we called it the wavy gravy icon <laughs> these waves are showing you similar fonts if you click on them. So if I click on this, it's going to just bring up some fonts that um, Illustrator thinks are similar. I would say Optima is a very good choice because mm -hmm. it has the same kind of contrast. Um, and some of these are chosen because they they might have, they might not look exactly the same, but they might have the same like widths or, you know, there's multiple reasons why, but that's a cool thing to do when you really like a certain style. Brandon Grotesque is something I also have active. Um, I think this is too wide. I want something a little more condensed. Yeah. I like Cinder, but I think it looks a little too black letter. A little too yeah but it, it has some qualities i like that i might want to that i might look for in other things yeah that's true um i like this oh that that's exactly it. kind of what i was thinking which is it has kind of this angular yeah, angular it's vibe kind of it. like a, a a softer yeah. cinder softer cinder <laughs> Um, and then I have two weights. So it's showing two here because I only have two weights of Manofa active. Mm. Um, because when I went in and activated it, I only felt like I needed these two. This one's a little wider. This one's condensed. I think the condensed one is perfect. So yeah. we have that in our favorites. Um, thrillers, woo, a little too much for this. Could be its own logo. Um, so that's what I have in my active fonts. But what if I want to find more? Where do I go? Well, it's as easy as going to the find more tab. What? And it's taking me to 
the Adobe Fonts service as a whole. So I unclicked this show activated fonts button because when I go to find more, I want to see things that I don't aren't have activated. activated. Yeah, already. these you can actually browse the entire library from here without yes. leaving, just from Illustrator. Yes. Oh, Sean says the leg on the pie could be more rounded to look like an ear. That's cool. Oh. And then maybe the okay. company name could hang from it like an earring. Yeah. <laughs> um, so here we see all of the Acme Gothic family, which um, we, we had a few active, but we didn't have everything active. Um, and we're going through the whole Adobe fonts, 20,000 fonts in here. Wow. So it's good to have these filters, like filtering sans serif, because I've had this filter. It's good to do that when you're in this menu, yep. because otherwise this is such a condensed, condensed, a small space for you to be viewing 20,000 fonts. So make sure that you have certain things selected if you don't want to be just scrolling yes. all day. I so. wouldn't recommend trying to scroll from A to Z the entire <laughs> Adobe Fonts library from the font menu. Not yes. recommended. So I could filter by heavy weights. You know, there's a lot of things that I could filter by. And this is kind of modeled after. I'll just go over to uh, the Adobe Fonts website so you can see this is kind of modeled after this whole filter panel on our website and you can do a lot more on the website. So if you're an illustrator and you're going through this flow that I'm going through right now and you still feel like you just need to spend more time researching, you know, what font you want to add, maybe you want to use the tags, go over to the website fonts.adobe.com. Yep. And the font family pages, the font family pages have a lot of usually have some great examples of, of the, the font in use and sometimes even has some information yeah. about the, the design of the font and what it's meant to evoke, which can be great um, context, because if you know that this font was designed to evoke something friendly, but architectural, that might fit exactly with what Ari wants to do for her project. So, yeah, yeah. so. The family will probably have images like this that show kind of how the designer intended it. You can see who designed it. Mm. You can see other fonts from them and that might help you in your search. So definitely go to the website if you're kind of hitting a dead end um, in the app or you just don't have as much space to really see everything. Like at mm -hmm. least on the website, you could type in your word so obviously we have pilo clay that we're working with and you have a little more space to see everything you could do it in grid view or list view mm -hmm. and just view a lot more stuff at once um, but it's pretty amazing what you can do just in the app so let's just go back and let me know if you have any questions about the website. We can go back and look at it briefly. Ari, really well. quick, when you're browsing and you go to a font detail page and you see some of the examples on the site, yeah. do you ever want to eat or go to or buy the things, the fake <laughs> things that those are for? Because the one you just looked at said almonds and chocolates. And I was like, oh, that looks like it would taste so good. <laughs> yes. And a lot of times they have fake packaging on there and I want to buy everything that's on I there. I like want to buy definitely. these fake products because the logo looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I realize I'm not on the find more tab anymore. So I'm going to go back to find more. This happens, you know, when you exit the menu and go back, it'll go back to your font, menu switch to the fonts the, tab instead of the library. Yeah. yeah. So I'm back looking at the whole library. This one is interesting. It has that handwritten feel that I was talking about. Um, but it would be readable at a small size, I think, too. And, and Yeah, so I'm going to add that to my favorites as well. And, ooh, that's interesting. Add so. 
Adso. Adso. I like that. What does everybody think? Mike says, go with your gut. When you see the right font, you know it. That is true. Although I feel Even like with 20,000 options, sometimes you can have choice paralysis. So <laughs> yes. using the favorites tool to I whittle I'm it down. Experiencing... Yes. I'm in experiencing choice paralysis. You're not even through the A's yet, just so we know. This yeah. is still the A's. And, you know, there's so many to load that it's not, especially since we're streaming, it's not that fast for me. So it would be faster if you weren't streaming at the same time. Let's be yes. honest. Yeah. Ooh, look at this Y. Ooh, I like that. That's interesting. Um, okay. Oh, that's interesting too. Hmm. I kind of like that. I've there's, never used Angie before. There's some great, great options. Ooh. So that was just the sans serifs. So if I take that filter off, what if I go with decorative or hand? Maybe I'll try hand first so we can see. So one thing about handwritten stuff it's usually not the best um in all caps because sometimes it's like scripty mm -hmm. so that's something we should keep in mind here's one i would choose it if it wasn't as um rough it's a little scratchy for me and especially because this logo is going to be at small sizes no one's going to notice that and it'll just it won't add much now you could so, you could create outlines and clean that up. You could also do something similar in fresco by hand and bring yeah. that in if you wanted that look. So, yeah, definitely. Hmm. Oh, look, this could be architectural <laughs> stone, <laughs> like fun stone. This is like a fun toga party stone. Charcuterie. I like that. Mm. Could be good. Okay, I think we have, let's see if these all made it in. Uh, oh, you still have your you filter. What? There's a different favorites when you have the find more filter on versus when you have your activated. Oh, I had the handwritten filter. There's so many filters. Um, so when you're on your fonts tab, there's a different favorites than when you're on your find more tab. So everybody keep that in mind. Um, so I'm going to activate the ones that I just saw today because I have all these favorites from previous times um, that I didn't realize because they're under the find more tab and i was looking at favorites under my fonts tab <laughs> so i'm going to activate charcuterie contrast i'm going to activate charcuterie flared Ooh, what about cooper a classic that be? it draws it draws me in every mm. time it, yeah it it's doesn't too really, playful for my brand it doesn't really work but i want it to work that's the power of cooper even when it doesn't work, <laughs> I wish it did. <laughs> the power of Koopa. Okay, what else did I see Super today? Um, oh, what about Belly? Always a classic for me. <laughs> but I have it active already, so I can just find it. Um, we're getting pretty, we're getting pretty Angie close to the, one. to the Angie. end. Ari. No. In case you haven't seen that, just want to make sure you know what time it is. <laughs> no, I'm too into this. <laughs> <laughs> we could just do this okay. forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mike says it needs something more sophisticated. Let's try this with Acme. And let's try um, putting a circle around it and see what happens. Holding down option. When you hold down Oops. option, you can draw from the center rather than from the corner. Yes. Super useful. 
And instead of doing that, I want to do that. And then I'm going to group these. And then let's see, how do we like this? I think the logo needs to be, I mean, this needs to be a little smaller. So what I would do now is take this and make like five of them. Command D kind of um, repeats what I just did. So I just did that. And I would change the font to, you know, something else that I, I had in my favorites for each one. So let's say we had... Um, Manofa that we really like. Oh, I really like that. And I would just change each one to be something else. I remember Angie Sands was something like a little bit different. So I can just find it this way. And just see how each of these looks. And the best part for everyone in the chat is that next live that we do, we're going to do logo animation using the finished version of this. Yes. So you guys will get to see what we end up doing. Yes. In fact, here is the information for next stream. It'll be two weeks from today, same time, same place. And we would love to have you all. And we're going to take Ari's logo and maybe create an animated yeah. GIF, something she could use to post on Instagram or on anywhere to kind of promote what she's doing and, and all that good stuff. So if you're interested in that, definitely join us. Thank you, everybody, today. And if you uh, yes. enjoy this stream, Adobe Fonts on Twitter and Adobe Fonts on Behance, please uh, please follow us there. And if you have any ideas of animators or GIFs that you've seen that you'd like, uh, the, that you think I should look at, send us a message, uh, Adobe Fonts on Behance. You can message us directly there. and. Um, and yeah, give me some ideas. Show me some other artists that are doing cool things on Behance and all that good stuff. Uh, I'd love to see it. And or then, if one of you animates logos, send let it, us let your us know. work. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks, everybody. Uh, Ari, thank you again for putting this together. I'm excited to see the final logo and see what we can do animation-wise. Yes. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thank we'll see you, you next ben. time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.